Most people will tell you that making a drawing like this takes years of practice. Using my method, my students working with me one class a week are drawing like this in eight weeks. And you can too. Hi, I'm Carrie from Carrie Alves Art Studio and let me show you how it's done. I set up my paper on my drawing board with my reference material and I create a cross axis line which allows me to measure accurately using the site size method. Using a simple measuring stick, I begin creating a foundational line drawing the same size as my reference material using what's called the site size method. This drawing is called a construct or a cartoon and acts as a foundational blueprint in which to build the rest of the drawing on. As I build this drawing, I'm looking for two main things. First, I'm looking for accuracy in my measurements to make sure that my shapes and sizes and my proportions are absolutely accurate to the reference material that I'm using. The second thing that I'm looking for is what's called separating our lights and our darks into shadow shapes. And when these shapes come together accurately, they actually create a very realistic foundational image in which to build the rest of the drawing on. The objective is to keep the image simple, graphical, and accurate. I take the time to go back and refine the drawing until I'm absolutely happy. Doing constructs is a wonderful skill in order to really refine your drawing ability and to really hone your ability to see accurately and measure things accurately. This construct is done on a separate piece of paper so it can be transferred over to any other surface to be worked in any medium. In this case, we're going to be working with graphite on paper. I set up my board again with my reference image, only this time I'm using my good paper with my transferred construct. And right away I begin filling in my dark shadow shapes with a flat even tone in order to establish a value base in which to build the rest of the drawing on. I do this for the entire drawing and go back over it as many times as I need to in order to create a flat even tone while maintaining the simple graphic shapes that were developed during the construct drawing. With my base tone established, I then turn and look at my reference material and I look at what's called edge quality. I look at the edges of my shadow shapes and I determine what the quality of them is. Are they soft? Are they hard? Are they a very gradual transition? What is it exactly? And then I go in and I begin to replicate the quality of those edges throughout the drawing. Determining the quality of those edges actually sets up the transitions later on between the dark and the light areas. And this helps to create a three-dimensional aspect to the image, which we call form. I also start using some darker pencils to work up some darker darks in some key areas of the drawing. I want to establish what's called a range of values, how dark are my darks and how light are my lights, in order to gauge all the different shades of grey that are in between. And it's a lot easier if you have your dark darks and your light lights already established fairly early in the drawing. With those darks established, I then go in and I create a gradual transition across the majority of larger forms in the face and it's called big form modeling. This is the last stage of the real foundation building for the drawing and it establishes the three dimensionality of the image and makes a big difference as you begin to develop the drawing later on. It eliminates things looking lumpy or patchy and creates a unifying effect for the drawing from this point forward. With all the foundational aspects of the drawing completed, it's now time to really get into the meat of the drawing. This is where everybody wants to go right away without recognizing or realizing that there's a lot of work that goes on initially just setting up the drawing before you get into the details. And this is what separates a great drawing from an ordinary drawing. Now that we're into the detail stage, I'm using a range of pencils to create my values and my details. And these are built up layer upon layer using ever increasing darker pencils and paying attention to all the things that we've already put in place. I'm looking at my shapes. I'm looking at my values, how dark are things, how light are things. And I'm also looking at the edge quality. How do things transition into each other? And I pay close attention to those details on each one of the features. 
I systematically work my way around the face, working on each one of the facial features one by one and looking carefully and focusing on that specific area so I can really hone in on the details. But because I've taken the time to make sure before that everything was accurate, my values are there, my transitions are there, it allows me to really hone in on those details. And one of the things that I'm looking for are shapes within shapes. What are the little darker and lighter and grayer shapes that are going on inside of each one of these features? In the nose, in the mouth, around the eyes, what are those tiny details and how do they transition with each other? I work with a really sharp pencil with a fine tip in order to get the detail that I want and I build up my layers very gradually so that I'm always hitting the right value note. I've been careful to work these things up gradually. If you're interested in learning this step-by-step -step method of creating beautiful realistic drawings, check out my online course called Drawing Portraiture made simple by following the link below. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.